Texas A&M beat LSU 38-23 last night. You said, what? 38? That, n- nonsense. 24. That had to be the total for A&M. Nope. They found a way to break that ceiling. And they broke through it in a big way. 38 points. And what, what really blows the mind and boggles the mind is it tells you this was there all along. This kind of result was always possible. They didn't get like five players back last night. They'd been missing. Nope. They, they played with Devon A. Chain. He went off. They played with Connor Wigman. He had a really good game. Uh, they, they physically owned LSU. Why couldn't that have happened earlier this year? You know what? Let's keep it positive here because I'm going to kind of tilt it negative at the very end. Well, I'm going to hopefully tilt it positive, but with a cautious message. But first off, Paper pop. You want me to blow your mind? It's Sunday night. You want to take something to the water cooler tomorrow? You take this stat to the water cooler. A&M's been a disaster this year, right? The record's a disaster. They're not even close to going to a bowl game. Texas A&M has three wins against AP top 15 teams this year. That's the most this millennium for that program in a season. I know that that's accurate, and I have no idea how it's accurate. No idea. Who are the three teams? Now, now notice, I said AP top 15 teams, and those were at the time they played. It was a long time ago, kids, but there was a moment this year where Miami was rated by the woeful AP in the top 15, and A&M beat them. There was a time this year, kids, where Arkansas was ranked in the top 10, and they got beat by Texas A&M. And there was certainly a time... 24 hours ago, when LSU was top five, and they beat them 38 to 23. Yes, five and seven. Five and seven non-bowl eligible A&M has three top 15 AP wins this year. That's the kind of stat that makes you want to fan yourself. Why do we play the games? I'll ask for the third time. Why do we play the games? Ten and a half point favorite LSU already clinched the West because this kind of stuff can happen. A&M's had a bad season, okay? No one's, no one's suggesting otherwise. But not all of Texas A&M has been bad. Not all of it. In fact, that true freshman class has been a really good surprise this year. Not all of it, but some of it. Like Connor Wigman has had a really good year. Uh, Evan Stewart is turning into a phenomenal player. But I want to talk about the vibe from yesterday. And this is where the external doesn't always match the internal. Uh, A&M, just on its own merit, is often misunderstood nationally and labeled in ways that it shouldn't be. Whatever. Yesterday, if you woke up and you were a casual, you looked at this game, and then you looked right past this game, and you thought to yourself, it doesn't matter, it's a meaningless game. And for you, there is probably no help. You need to go get help. But even for the more dialed-in fan, you probably looked and you said, LSU at a and like I know they don't like each other, but... Why should I watch that game? Like, what's really on the line? But some of you turned it on, and you saw one of the most jacked environments you saw on Saturday. I mean, there were some games where there were maximum postseason consequences riding on the outcome. This game had none of that for a and and Kyle Field was packed, and they were on fire. And I think when you're a part of that, and you don't have a bowl game to play for, and you don't have playoff hopes on the line, you're not going to go to Atlanta, that becomes all of those things for you. So last night just becomes A&M's bowl game. It is their SEC championship game. It is their playoff, Super Bowl, whatever you want to call it. And they just they played with their hair on fire. They did what they've been capable of doing all year. Pat, talented teams, even the ones who are underachieving, they've always got that in them. What Michigan's passing game did last night or yesterday afternoon, it was the same thing AM's team did yesterday. Padlock stat, by the way, A Chain had 38 carries. That's a Derrick Henry stat line. 38 carries for 215 yards. And that led to the other padlock stat, which was AM being 10 of 15 on third down. Listen to these numbers. Your Texas AM Aggies, 24 first downs. They had 38 points. They had 274 rushing yards. They had 429 overall yards. And they ran the same number of plays as LSU did. I think like 67 or 68. This is the same team that could... They failed to run 40 total offensive plays against App State in a loss earlier this year. So moving forward for both of these teams, 
Yes, friends, LSU is still going to play in the SEC championship game this Saturday. They are a 17-point dog against Georgia. That is the exact number we told you that point spread would be. Right on the money, 16 and a half or 17. As for Texas A&M, I told you I was going to have a little negative opinion on this. It's not necessarily negative. I just have a concern. And this is my concern. I think it's apparent to anyone who's watched that team, especially Aggie fans this year, things need to change offensively for them to ever do what they did yesterday on a consistent basis. Like yesterday doesn't mean anything changed. They just, they got a, a big performance, an individual performance. But here could be the problem. And I say could be because we don't know. Jimbo Fisher is the kind of person to dig his heels in when he gets even an ounce, even a modicum of perceived validation on his theory. His theory being his offense works, you just got to execute it. It's fine. We're fine. It's all fine. Well, it hadn't worked this year, has it? Uh-oh, until yet last night, and then A&M hangs 38, and that's the last game they're going to play this year. Jimbo Fisher's the kind of guy, if you're not careful, if no one gets to him very quickly, Jimbo's the kind of guy who walks in that locker room and, and doesn't blink. He may, even, he may even rip his shirt a little bit. He unbuttons several buttons on it at the very least, and he lets the hamburger meat hang out, and he says, what, what, you want to talk about offense now? What? Told y'all it'll work. Told y'all. I guarantee you the words told y'all came out of his mouth last night. Probably quickly, but I bet they came out of his mouth. The worst result last night would not have been A&M losing. Because at this point, it just would have been another loss in a bad season. The best result would have been A&M winning and the appropriate changes still being made. The worst result would be if A&M wins last night and it just pushes Jimbo Fisher further into the corner, digging his heels in and defending a failing system. So last night's great. Ride those waves. Ride that vibe. Hopefully lock up a decent recruiting class. But if last night serves in any way to validate in Jimbo Fisher's mind that, hey, that offense actually isn't bad at all. Look, look, it worked here. We'll just carry that into next year. No, you won't. No, you won't. You'll have the players to do it. You'll have the overall talent roster to do it. You will not do it. They've got to have an offensive coordinator there. They've got to have somewhat of an offensive philosophy change. As I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, I am not going to diagram this on a grease board for you. I'm not a head coach. I'm not an offensive genius. I'm not a doctor. I just know the ugly baby when I see it. Don't have to break it down for you. I know a bad offense when I see it. A&M's offense has been bad. It didn't get fixed last night. It really didn't. It just, it just happened last night. You, you ever been friends with someone who's just, just an overall not great person, but you, you just have an incident or you have a day with them where you, you go home that night and say, oh, they weren't that bad today. How many times does that last? How often does one exception to a well-established rule change the rule? The answer is hardly ever. So let's all cross our fingers that the lessons have still been learned. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.